Hi, welcome back. Today is day seven of SAC planning learning series. In today's session, we're going to talk about data actions in SAC planning. In my previous session, I was going through manual planning process. In manual planning, we prepare an input template and request or prepare a, a platform for users to input the numbers. Once the numbers are placed, and there could be some calculations in there, and then the numbers can be allocated to the base members as well if they were inputted at the higher level. This is a typical manual planning process. Sometimes you may not be able to input the numbers manually. In those cases you may have to uh, automate the process of planning by using uh, planning functions and those planning functions are called as data actions. There are multiple steps uh, that are given as part of data actions. So we're going to go through those uh, different steps or uh, activities in data actions in detail. Data actions in automated planning uh, can be used for other scenarios as well. For example, if we wanted to apply a complex logic for creating a plan value or forecast value, then uh, it is um, difficult to implement that in a manual user template. Those cases, data actions come in and we can prepare the formulas um, and then to achieve the required planning scenario. Not only a complex requirement, but if you uh, identify any planning operation that is very repetitive in nature, uh, data actions or automated planning is the um, best way to, to address that. As part of data actions, there are multiple steps provided by SAP. Uh, the first one is copy uh, step. This is a, a very basic and more important step or plan, planning function or planning action in any, any, any of the planning projects. There are other steps like allocations, advanced formula, and etc. So we're going to start with copy step, and then uh, we're going to look at some of these uh, um, use cases in the system. So let's get started. I'm going to access my SAC system. Here I am. I am going to navigate to my models. I got a sales revenue model, and then I'm going to uh, access a story that is created on or I can create a new story, which is going to be uh, having the number revenue and also the year in the dimension. Let's get a, create a new story. I'm gonna go to the sales plan and then go to the stories, create a new story for day seven. Put in a folder. This story is going to address copy function, uh, functionality in detail. Let's get a new story. Take a canvas, optimize design experience. I'm going to insert a table from the existing model. I take public and then models. I'm oh, sorry, public sales plan. I can take my sessions or sales revenue. It doesn't matter. They're both uh, same. Some having this uh, table. Going to turn turn it off. Then get more space here. So here I'm going. I currently have one version displayed. It is the actual version, and then gross sales is displayed. I'm going to pull or insert um, year data into the drill down. For that, I'm going to invoke my design builder, and I will add dimension that is going to be. Um, the time dimension or the date dimension. It's going to go to the year. Okay, I've got my year in here into the table. I'm going to switch it off. So I uh, let me uh, look at the version management for this one and understand how many versions we currently have. So you can see there are um, there is just one version that you can see the the actual version and uh, there's no um um oh actually let me turn it off turn it on uh, show versions in use only if i turn it i can i can display all the versions that are available so i don't 
want to have all the other versions for, for this particular use case or example. So I'm going to delete the, the previous versions here. You can keep the forecast version, but that's not a problem. So I have both actual and forecast to public version. So I'm going to create a new empty version here and then prepare my um, uh, examples uh, on that particular version. Let me uh, look at the the columns and what are the different, or actually the versions that are being taken into the uh, columns so that we can see uh, why don't we see the forecast version to be up here here. So I'm going to switch to the um, table and then uh, remove the version management and then get to the uh, table properties and then just Currently, the version is filtered to actual. So I'm going to remove the filter on the version. So it's going to bring me all the available version, actual and forecast. So um, it's, this is basically exactly same. So I'm going to switch back to my version management and then prepare a new version for my test. Even I can delete the forecast and, and make it very clean so that I can work on the um, two versions always, and it is going to be very easy to understand. Okay, I'm going to create a new version, public, and say this time I'm going to give forecast um, 2023. This is my new version. I'm using this category as forecast, and then say create. This is going to be an empty, um, and then you can see that in the forecast uh, value, there's an uh, empty in it. So now what I'm going to do, I I will apply a planning function to get the data of 2023 into forecast 2023 version. So basically I'm not changing the year. Uh, it is going to go uh, into the same year of 2023. So which means it's just that version changing, not the, the year dimension. So basically uh, for that, I don't need a copy rule. Um, I can prepare a data action in a very simple way. Let's take a look at um, how do I configure the data action for this use case? Um, I'm going to close this one. If I have to show that use case on my note, this is going to be copy actuals to forecast, same year, but to a specific target version. Um, so we're going to look at how do we do this in the system. I'm going to go to the new story. I need to save it uh, before I get to the uh, data action configuration, or I can go to another uh, page and then configure the data action there. Okay, I'm going to uh, access my data actions here, more, and then data action. I'm going to click data action and it is going to um, open a visual to configure the data action. So I'll say copy 2023, that's my uh, data action name, you can say copy 2023 to forecast 2023 portion. That's my objective. The default model will be uh, the sales revenue one. That's just the one that I am creating a story. And uh, that's it. I'm going to start adding my uh, planning functions as steps. So here we call them as steps. So you can go and add a step add a copy step. This is a, a step for copy function. There are steps for others. This is a step for cross-model copy step and there's a uh, advanced formula step. And there is an allocation step. You can have these um, other steps in the next uh, use cases or next scenarios in upcoming sessions. So in this session, I'm going to focus on copy step. So I can give a name to the copy step, copying uh, data and then uh, before I get to the filters and copy rules, I wanted to talk about parameters here. The parameters um, is more like variables. It's going to allow you to input uh, a dynamic value during runtime. So um, if I don't have uh, anything to be defined as parameter, by default is there's one that you cannot avoid. This is always going to be a target version. So when you're working on some copy functionality uh, functionality of copy, and you must choose the target version 
uh, from the ex in, uh, existing values. So that is something mandatory. So you can also see um, um, there is a, an option for you to choose the input um, as a fixed or dynamic. If you say fixed, it is always going to hold this value uh, for this particular parameter. Uh, but I don't want to keep that as fixed. I will keep that as dynamic so that it is getting prompted as part of functionality or, or parameter value. And then I will be able to modify uh, that and in the runtime. So I'm not making any changes to the default setting. I have a default parameter uh, for target version and that I must have this populated during the runtime, either fixed or dynamic. Okay, uh, I can create more parameters, but for my first use case, I don't need any more um, at this time. So I switch back to the copying data step. So you can give the date same name uh, in the description as well. So yeah, and then filters, you can see uh, filters are um, the area or the um, the, the target data set from the model. For example, I, I may have data for multiple years and I may have data for multiple versions, but uh, filters make sure what uh, exact data set that I wanted to uh, apply this planning function or this planning step. So I need to define all my parameter, uh, all my filters first so that I, I, tar I know what is my working um, working area in the model. So here in this particular use case, my filter is going to be, um, since I'm working on a different uh, version, so I have to translate from one version to another version. So I, I, I have to choose the um, the source version uh, is, is something, and then target version will be something else. And then I applied the filter on the actual version so here in this case, it is hard coded to take the data uh, from the model for or where the version is actual. So it is okay for this use case, but you may um, have an option um, to choose a different version sometimes. So in that case, what I what we should do really going to the parameters and create a source version another uh, so that your source version can also be dynamic. So what I'm going to say. Uh, I can create a new parameter here, create a parameter. I can call that as a, a source version. And then um, I can leave that as a member dimension will be, uh, this is going to be version. So I'm going to create version and then default member. I For now I'm going to say actual, uh, but I can have a different default value for this one. So that's, that's it, I got a new parameter. Um, so just basically instead of hard coding my uh, filter uh, uh, to a, a version called actual, so I can change that to have um, a parameter. So I'm going to open this one and then change to parameters and then choose source version here. So my filter is uh, based on the source version that is going to be inputted uh, during the runtime execution. So for example, if I don't give, it is going to take the actual uh, uh, there for source version because that is the default value. And then, uh, and what else I, uh, and also I wanted to apply this formula for 2023 data set. So if I have more years of data, which I don't want to disturb and then make this uh, apply to that. So I'm going to need another uh, filter for 2023. So same uh, way, if I wanted to apply a parameter for 20 year, I can still do that. But at this time, I'm going to put this as a hard coded value or fixed value, or I wanted to apply 2023 here. So this is a data set that uh, is targeted. Basically, you can see that data set um, from this diagram, um, you can see that the execution scope is defined via filters. Um, the step execution um, is executed for the data that is uh, uh, defined in the filters from the model. And then the execution happens and the result will be written back to the model. That is a typical process for data action step. 
going back to the story uh sorry data action this is what happening from modal uh, 2023 data and the version that i input during the execution will be taken as the execution data set as defined in the filter and then for this use case what i wanted to do i wanted to uh, copy 2023 data of actual to 2023 of target version which is going to be forecast that i will be selecting uh, during the runtime um, that is, I, the target version is already defined as part of parameters, okay? So my data action is good, ready. And then I can save this data action. And then I put it in a new folder called data actions, public data actions. Or I can put in the sales plan and create and inside the data actions. Copy 2023. And save it. Data action has been created. Can go back to my story. And wanted to apply a data action here. For that, I can add a new um, um, data action trigger uh, and then insert it here. So for that, I'm going to create a planning actions and take take the data action trigger and then put it in here. Just um, and to do this right, uh, select it and put it here. For that, I'm going to configure the required data action. That is going to be my copy 2023. And then I can label it for saying copying 2023 data. So that's the uh, description also. That's fine, I'm going to leave that. I will take it out. So when I run this data action, it is going to call that data action step of copy and then run the data uh, processing. I'm going to save the story and run uh, my data action there. So go to the sales plan, stories, day seven, and then it is going to be data action copy step. Save it. Story has been saved. Uh, let me run this data action now. So you can see that uh, the actual source version is being defaulted to actual, but still I can make the change and that's fine. I'm going to stick to the actual. And for the target version, I'm going to pick what version I will uh, move this data to or copy this data to, sorry. Um, and then choose forecast 2023 and then say, okay. And this is going to go in 2023 only because um, there's no other, um, there's no rule defined other than what is uh, defined as in the filter. And then whatever the target version I have selected, everything in this, ver this version will be copied to the forecast uh, version that I selected as target for 2023 data, say run. It's done. Now you can see forecast version is being updated with the uh, actual value. So when this copy uh, function uh, completed, it was copying everything from uh, source for all the dimensions uh, to the target. That you can observe by going into the um, by going into the model as well. For example, sorry. I'm going to copy this URL and then go to the model and then see the data um, output. So the here files public. And open it. I'm going to keep this page open so that I don't have to navigate all through all these folders every time. So sales revenue, um, I'm going to donate this to the data management and I have actual, and there is a forecast 2023. I'm going to switch. Um, uh, I'm going to show unpublished data because I didn't publish my data. So that's another important thing. Otherwise, 
if I don't select this one, or oh, the unpublished data that's currently sitting on my story is not going to show. So you can see 2023.01 is being updated for this version. Exactly a copy of 2023 uh, months on the date dimension. So it, this is not changed, only the version is changed, it's just that the 2023 data has been copied to the 2023, but in a different version though, from actual to the forecast. Um, what you can do by going in here and then you can publish this data. You, there are multiple ways that you can publish the, uh, the data. You can do this from version management. It's going to be from version management. Uh, you can click on publish. Uh, this data, which is in edit mode, will get published. Or you can go to do the and more navigations and then do the published data. Or you can choose to revert data as well. So right now, I am going to do um, a revert data or actually I'm going to publish the data. For that, I'm going to go to the more and then say publish and publish data. Publish all data changes, yes, publish it. So my uh, recent version update is being published. So you can see that this is copied. So what I'm going to do in the, my next case, I wanted to um, take the actual or forecast, either of them, because they are both same, and then copy this data to 2024 um, year, but it in a different version. So I'm changing to, I'm gonna put it in a different version, which is gonna be a new version forecast. And at the same time, I'm changing uh, my uh, date dimension to go into 2024 instead of uh, 2023. So you can see that. So I'm, uh, I will click on copy date uh, and then open the details of it. If you look at the uh, the configuration for that, uh, uh, the parameters, and you can also see as part of the details of that particular data action. Okay, uh, I'm going to create a new data action for my second scenario. Uh, quickly, I will go to um, data actions, more, or I have, an, I have a window for creating data actions. So I'm going to go, and then this time I'm going to kick, say copy 2023 to 2024. Um, then default model, same sales revenue. Then go to add my step and parameters. This is a copy step, say copy 2023 to 2024. I can have the same description, but it's fine. So in the filters, my filter is going to be um, the source version. Of course, my source version will be um, either I can choose actual or the forecast version just I prepared in my previous scenario. Um, I can leave that as a parameter so that I don't have to uh, worry about what version I should be choosing. Source version and then member will be version. You want to leave everything. Uh, but by default, I wanted to keep it for actuals for now. But I can choose any value. That's my parameter. Um, go back to the copy step, and then I switch this version to have source version, not the target version to be in the filters because its target version is going to be something that is not currently available for uh, preparing my data set. Okay, take the source version. And this time uh, I wanted to take 2023 20, data. Uh, there's no change to that, so go dead date and then go into 2023 because that is my extracted data set for the version I have chosen. And then the, my execution data set is ready and I wanted to do certain action. Um, that action is going to be uh, defined in the rule. That's when we need a rule saying what is to be happen. So take the date dimension from 2023 and then apply to 2024. So 
So that's my copy rule. Um, this is an hard coded copy rule. I can even have a parameter for uh, year and then apply that parameter here so that um, so you have an option to choose the parameter as well. Since I don't have a parameter on the date dimension, it's, it's giving me uh, uh, like this. So I'm going to save it and then call copy 2023. I'll put that in the same place as my previous data action is there. I'll say, okay. All good, I will go to my data action. Um, I'm gonna give some space here. I will uh, add another data action, planning actions and then data action trigger. This is going to go right here. And I'm going to configure this to uh, have the one that I just created, 2023-12. So give the label 2023, copy 2023 to 2024. Okay, and then parameters, you can see there's one target and then source, uh, the year I hard coded. So that is all good. I'm going to switch it off. And then give some space here. Um, now my story is also to be updated. Um, now, I don't have a version for 2024 uh, to be chosen as, um, or any new version that I wanted to put. So I have to prepare a version uh, that I can do from version management screen. I will go to version management and say, I don't want to disturb the existing forecast 2023. So just keep that there. I will say uh, for CST 2024, so that uh, it is going to go in a new version. So by not disturbing the existing version. My 2024 will be empty, of course, you can see that. Um, now, uh, year is in 2023. So now let's run the, I'm, I'm not going to need the version management. So if I run my data action, that is 2024, uh, I should get the cop data copy to 2024. Let's do that. So I'm going to run it. Choose the, the, the target version. This time I have a newly created version to choose. Say, okay. I can either choose source version or, or factual uh, or the forecast because they are both same. So I'm choosing actuals for this, for, for this case. Running in the background and it prepare uh, unpublished data of same for 2024. So you can see the data is being populated to the 2024 uh, time day, uh, um, months actually you can say uh, you can see that in the in the model also when you refresh and then choose uh, forecast 2024 you can see that the data is being copied over to 2024 months um, months of 2024 not the 2023 so that's what uh, we were able to configure um, uh, for the 2024 copy. So it happened month to month. So I can see that plan in the data action copy step um, of configuration. So you can see when I define the copy rules from 2023 to 20, since it's a higher level node, you can see all the detail mappings for each month from for 2023 to 2024. So it, it, it pro appropriately uh, copied over to these values. Um, as part of this copy step. So I just wanted to uh, add another thing by using a parameter for the year, um, either uh, a direct parameter value that you can uh, provide as part of the execution, or you can you can even take that value from the input prompt. Um, so we can we can do this um, both, uh, and then check. That's that's, uh, I'm not going to publish this uh, data set. I'm going to revert it. So I can revert that by going into version management, and then publish data, and then revert data. So what happens, it's going to uh, revert uh, the changes that are unpublished, which, is how, which happens to be my recent change because this one was already published. So this, uh, uh, in case now, 
i'm going to make a change to the to the data action by introducing another parameter for year so i'm going to call this as um year uh, we'll choose uh, date and then any level is fine and then i'm not really giving any member value here so this parameter is for date oh sorry year i have my data action configured configured um to use date and then here from i can say 2023 that's fine because um in the two value i'm going to choose instead of 2024 i'm going to give parameter and then choose year even i can choose from value as also parameter for this particular use case it doesn't make sense so i'm going to put here as a parameter value say save it and then when I run this data action, it is going to prompt me for a year as well um, that we can see copy uh, data action. And if I choose 2024, it will be copying over to 2024 or different year that will happen accordingly. Um, I can run this by choosing 2024 and then run it. Same thing happened as last time, but this is uh, with parameter. I'm going to make this as a uh, input prompt. So I'm going to publish or revert the data that I just published. And then this, this time I'm going to in, introduce an input control. So take that input control and put it right there um, on the dimension. In my input control, I'm going to choose my dimension. This is going to be my date and then filter by member. Um, by default, I get only the booked values. In order to show all the values, um, uh, what I'm going to do, I will change the settings to all dates, and then it displays everything. And then I'm going to select all dates and then say OK. So you can see all the dates now. And then now uh, we can pick one of the input control values and then apply as a value input to the data action. Let's take a look at that, how we're going to do in the, for the same data action that we um, we have, I'm going to let change the edit data action trigger in here uh, for the prompt of the year, instead of, um, I'm going to choose input control. So the, there is a, an option for this input uh, control. Let me take, the value from the date. So here I'm going to pick the data input control and then accordingly that value will be uh, selected for the user input. Let me take 2024 um, alone and then apply selection. So what it is going to do, uh, currently there's no value and then say, okay, this action, now going to take the value from the prompt uh, because that's when uh, 2024 is being uh, given. So run it. So it's it's done. And then you can see um, it, it's been copied to 2024. If you wanted to see everything, you can see 2023 as well, and then apply filters. Um, so to show the 2023 as well. So in this way, uh, by configuring the data action uh, trigger, you can uh, either choose the value from the story filter or input control or member selection, all three options possible. In this previous example, uh, we have taken this, um, um, we are we populated the prompt value using input controls um, selected value. Okay, with that, I have um, covered um, the topics that I wanted to talk for the um, copy. Uh, we've covered actuals to forecast same year, but also in the second use case to different year and using a parameter and using an input control. And we also have an option to choose um, copy action on different models, which is another step here. You can add more steps. Um, there is another step here. Uh, this is going to allow you to con copy the data from one model to another model. So you can choose the source and tar uh, target models, and also you can parameterize the model that you wanted to 
um, copy over to, and you can also do the mapping between those models here. Um, I, I can talk about this in one of these sessions later, uh, but for now, in this session, I'm going to uh, stop by concluding uh, the, uh, the topics that I've just uh, discussed or described in this session. Um, that's all for this today's session. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.